Bam. All right, folks, let the recording begin. So I'm Laura Wilson, uh, the Global Director of Small Group and Personal Training for PowerPlate. Uh, I'm thrilled that you guys are here joining me for this kind of upskilling education, talking a little bit about coaching, programming for small groups, just best practices and kind of how we can upskill ourselves. You know, a lot of us are perhaps not working because commercial gyms, studios, et cetera, are shut down. It's a great time to kind of learn, explore, hone our skills so that when it's time and we can get back in there, hopefully we have some new tools that we can be using in those situations. So without further delay, I'm going to go ahead and let's start looking through the deck. And at any time, feel free again to pop into that chat box, ask questions, but I certainly am gonna leave time at the end for you guys to ask questions as well. So you can be jotting those down. I do have you all muted at the moment, but I will unmute us all at the end and you can be asking questions at the end. So, all right. So today we're gonna to talk a little bit about the psychology of training in groups. When I say psychology, I'm meaning how are, as humans are we wired? Um, this idea that if we understand how the brain thinks and works, it's really going to allow us to be better coaches. Um, that our emotions and our feelings are really tied to uh, how we feel about exercise and that plays into how well we adhere and develop habits, the power of interacting with other human beings and the power even of competition. So that's all going to, going to be discussed in the psychology of group training. We're also going to talk about specifically coaching in group settings, um, both small and large, and making sure that we understand the different things that play into those factors. Uh, oral, visual, kinesthetic learners, knowing that um, movement is tied to emotion and how do we coach to facilitate that? How do we coach to include competition? And then different things that just make coaches, uh, that all coaches need to have or make coaches better, some better than others. And then lastly, we'll talk about programming for the group setting, themes, um, markers for programming, programming structure, uh, environment, stressors, things that we need to consider when you are programming for whether it's large or small groups. So the primary purpose is really to explore why small group training or large group training is so powerful and then tell you a little bit about what PowerPlate has to offer um, and how we tap into this psychology while also providing one of the most effective and results-driven workouts. So that's a little bit of what we're going to do today. So why group training? Well, humans have a really deep need to connect with other human beings. And we might be feeling this more now than ever as we are um, isolated in our own homes, truly understanding that need and that want to connect with other humans is going to allow us as coaches to deliver and enhance their movement experiences, their exercising in that group setting. So that power of connection and how we are wired is crucial to being a really impactful coach because emotion is directly tied to motivation. If I have a positive experience in relation to an act, I want to do that again. If I have a negative experience, I'm not going to want to do whatever it was again. So we need to drive behaviors and actions in a group setting that are positive and that constant interacting and emoting, as in I had success, I like my group, that means I'm going to try harder. You know, If I was successful last time, I want to come again, maybe I want to come more often. Those are the things we want to tap into. And that all comes down to this idea of community. We've got to create community. And really coaching in that setting is what's going to allow your members to be successful and want to come back. So a group setting, whether it's small or large, really needs to have a positive environment. So how do we do this? Well, literally, we go all the way back to maybe stuff that you had to study, either in high school or maybe college, Maslow's hierarchy of needs. We need to feel safe, loved, happy, successful, and supported. Those things equal success. So those physiological needs, safety and security, are actually driven by intrinsic motivation. Love and belonging, self-esteem and self-actualization, we tap into all of those things in that group setting if we are setting them up to be in a community. 
The other thing that is really impactful with working out in groups is that coaches creating these positive environments and connecting human beings not only builds their self-esteem and self-efficacy, but people who, that, people who feel connected in a group actually improve their health. It's been shown, Mayo Clinic has done several studies that show that they live longer, they have fewer chronic diseases such as diabetes, cardiorespiratory heart disease, they have lower rates of obesity as well as depression. Humans need to connect. And we're even seeing now um, some of the, the doctors that are constantly on TV telling us this idea of self isolation oh my goodness, I can't even talk, self-isolation is really going to impact not just this idea of we're trying to impact the, the virus, but it's going to impact us as humans because we might see higher rates of those other things like depression, um, suicide, rates of obesity, et cetera, because we're being isolated. So the power of community and you guys as coaches, as managers, et cetera, are going to have even more impact when we come out of this because you can truly create that and get us back to where we need to be as human beings. So the industry studies show us again and again that, that people, especially now, are going to be seeking out group coaching experiences. So establishing that relationship, creating connections with like-minded participants really is going to enhance their trust and their rapport with you as a coach. So we're going we're gonna to have some really powerful stuff when we, we all get to get back to this. Um, what we can do then is tap into those reward centers of the brain. So responses literally wired into our brain can become reinforced behaviors so the activation of this type of the brain says, I want to do that again, when it's a positive reward center reaction. So as coaches, we've got to figure out how to tap into this. And it's quite simple. We have to provide emotionally positive experiences and connect human beings with one another. As soon as you do that, as soon as you say, hey, Joe, meet Sally, you guys have a lot in common and you start pairing them together within a group or um, saying, hey, I know that you, this is a, a great small group for you to work out in, and then start setting them up for success, you've tapped into that reward center, and they are going to have reinforced behavior because it motivates and incentivizes them to have continued behaviors. So that's really the key then to start developing intrinsic motivation versus just extrinsic. We know that as coaches, we are their extrinsic motivation. Some people say to us simply that they want to train with us because they need someone to have an appointment with or they're not coming to the gym, they're not working out. So this not only solves for that extrinsic and probably at a lower cost point if you can do it in smaller, large group, but more importantly, it's gonna start driving that reward center, which then is an intrinsic motivation. That made me feel good. The coach allowed for me to succeed. I want to do this again because let's face it, most people don't work out, not because they don't have time or money, but because they don't like it. And we're seeing that now more than ever. We're at home. We all have probably a lot of time, and yet people are still not working out. So it's this idea that we've got to connect them, create those positive reward center parts of the brain, and community is the way to do that, to create intrinsic motivation. Because when they have that, they're going to adhere long term to the activity. So relatedness is super important. You've got to make it relevant to them. If they feel that it is relevant to them, why am I doing this? Why am I exercising? So giving them that context, they want to continue. They also need to feel competence, meaning confidence in what they're doing. So rather than saying, ah, uh, 10 push-ups on your toes and they can't get there, we've got to create goals, settings, group activities that create competence and allow them to develop that confidence. Lastly, autonomy, giving them freedom of choice. So in group settings, it's amazing because you can actually have people work together towards a common goal. You know, we're all going to do 100 push-ups and we're going to divide them up however you want to. There's five of you today. So whether someone does 20 and someone does two and you do them on the toes or you're doing them on your knees, that freedom of choice, number one, competence because hopefully they're going to have confidence in what they do because they were able to contribute to the overall goal 
And then you've got to just coach back to that relatedness and make it relevant to them as to why they want to do it. If those three things show up in a group setting, it will trigger that intrinsic motivational response, that reward center. Again, relatedness, competence, and autonomy. Those three things are crucial. Lastly, this idea of group or we, us. That power is immense and it taps into something that is literally primal in us because we drive emotion and connection through this history of groups and teams. Humans have hunted and gathered and stuck together as groups throughout evolution, throughout the history of time. Why? Because we maximize strength and minimize weakness when we create teams or groups. So it's a very primal need in us to want to work in a group to do that very thing, to maximize strengths and minimize weaknesses. So building activities that require the humans in your group to work together is really important and it furthers that reward center reaction. So groups plus activity, it's a win-win. And we really wanna to work to facilitate that. So what does this all mean when we think about how we're wired or that psychology of coaching? It goes back to simply connecting people. Okay. Scott Hobson, if any of you um, know him, who is a phenomenal coach across many different um, brands and many different genres and modalities, said, we are feeling machines that think. He said, you can outfeel any thought but you can never outthink a feeling. Meaning whatever emotion we have, we cannot change that emotional reaction connection. We can't outthink it. It's always going to be in your gut or what you feel. So it's those moments that we've really got to think, how do we connect that reward center? How do we create positive emotional response? Because we can never outthink a feeling. So three things that a successful group coach has to do is create a connection with, between people, like-minded individuals. Secondly, recognize how human beings feel and think so that you can tap into those reward centers and then provide those positive experiences, positive environments around which we work out in. And then third, implement play, implement autonomy, competence, relatedness, um, group goals, so that we can really facilitate those three things, autonomy, competence, and relatedness, to equal success. So those are kind of the bare bones of psychology of how we're wired. So let's jump right into the next thing then. Coaches have to be incredible communicators. So in this slide, we're really focusing on the different types of learners, oral, visual, kinesthetic. So we have three different types of learners and we have to communicate in, a multiple, um, in multiple ways to make sure that we're coaching and delivering to each of those. About 65% of your learners or your clients will be visual. That means physical gestures, body language, facial expressions, um, being able to demo the move and eye contact are gonna be very important for those learners. 30% are going to be oral learners. So the words that you use, pitch, tempo, articulation, volume, emotive sounds, even claps, things like that are going to help them to learn. And then about 5% of your learners are gonna be kinesthetic. So they need touch and feel. They've got to have time to do a few repetitions so they can actually develop the movement, the muscle memory or feel of that skill before they're gonna be able to adjust. Then the next thing we start thinking about, once we know those are the three types of learners and we've got to be able to coach to all of them, we've got to be able to then give that imagery or feeling cue because task and movement for um, the common client is not, a, is not a, a, an inherited thing. Saying we want to lengthen the hamstring as we tip or hinge at the hip is not gonna make sense to them. Whereas, pushing your butt back like you're going to sit in a chair might make more sense because you're giving them an image or a feeling that relates more to real life. So we can use metaphors, um, 
tangible kinesthetic experiences are going to create a better connection in their brain and allow them to better execute. So again, thinking about telling them to pull a rope apart when you're asking them to do a pulling movement, or if they're punching, maybe you say break the glass. Again, it's just those tangible things that we really want to tap into for imagery and feeling cues. Then lastly, when we're coaching a community or group, we need this to be um, a positive competitive environment. Uh, sometimes, you know, competition can, can be perceived as negative, but actually it typically motivates people to act. It changes, it can change an attitude. It can change the environment. It's going to usually push people to do more than they would without competition. The key is we need to make sure that no one in the group feels it is unfair, unfair unattainable, um, or, or skewed, meaning not, it has no purpose. So using internal competition is usually a very safe way to do this, asking them to beat their personal best, um, to improve on a previous experience or hit their personal goal. However, external competition, as long as you level the playing field, is often really positive as well because it requires teamwork. And this whole idea of working out in groups and connecting with human beings is how we do that in small and large groups. So setting a group benchmark or pairing people within the larger group so that you're taking out that one-on-one -on -one com um, competition and you're setting them up to celebrate together and truly celebrate those things. Celebrate personal successes, celebrate them as a team and acknowledge their effort, praise them. They want to know that, that you feel and see their encouragement and the energy within the team because that helps them actually more than winning itself does. So those are coaching considerations within this idea of the different types of learners and how we can incorporate competition. Now, when we think about what's happening specifically in power plate coaching, we have a number of coaching models. We have both large and small group uh, that we utilize all of these tools for. Power play adds another dimension. It's challenging, it's putting different stresses on the body that perhaps some people have never felt or done before. There's the potential with a piece of equipment that they could step on or off. Um, but we still have those really crucial things that we already talked about, the psychology of how we're wired and the considerations when we're coaching that we can use and tap into because people do want to connect to a group. They are motivated by learning the benefits and why they should work hard. So when we coach in power play and when we take the trainers um, or managers or whomever it is that attends our training through the training, I like to give them a metaphor that as a coach, you are the director of a movie and you have to direct your actors, you might have to give them the why behind what you want them to do, and you've got to lead them all the way through the end of a 14 hour shooting day when you still need one more shot and they want to be done. So it's, it's a step-by-step -step process. Step one is coach to direct. So this is when uh, you give your actors their lines, their marks, tell them where to go. It's, it's simply the beginning of any movement exercise, uh, maybe the beginning of a set, et cetera, where you're giving them the basics, what to do. So in this case, I've given a list of things specifically that we cover when we go over coaching in our modules, in our learning and education modules, and how they can actually coach and we practice and we drill through this. But it's just that idea that uh, you've got to give them the basics of what they're doing so they can get started. Once they have started the movement process, then you're going to be able to do the big stuff, teaching them, educating them. So it's about the benefits, using those imagery and um, feeling cues that I mentioned earlier, thinking about whether they're oral, kinesthetic, et cetera, using those reward centers and how we know we're wired to really dive into how can they execute the moves better, telling them where they should feel the work, giving them those external coaching cues so that they can really do the movement well and know that they're doing it well. So it's really the why uh, behind what they're doing. So this is really impactful to our clients because we know that more and more as we have members, clients, et cetera, coming in, they are well-educated. They want to know the why. Why am I doing this? Why this exercise? So again, that's going to relate back to that idea of developing 
relatedness, competency, and autonomy, because you're going to be giving them some freedom to, of choice. You're going to be hopefully setting them up for success, and you're going to be making it relevant to them. So you can see that this section, this coach to teach section is a big one, and it's where we give a lot of information to our clients. The last thing we do then is to take it home. Uh, we coach to drive. And this is where in that 14th hour as the director on set in a movie, and you know you haven't got the shot quite right yet, and your actors are really tired, what are you going to say? What are you going to do to allow them to give you that one more really good shot? So encouraging, motivating, challenging, driving, you know, it happens in a lot of different ways. Um, but it is still important and it does still tap into this idea of reward centers, praising, encouraging, developing that positive experience that they have so that it's tied to an emotional response of exercise. I like it. I want it. I see success. So they come back again and again and again. So let's step away from coaching for just a second and talk about specifically what are some of the things that we need to think about when we discuss or sit down to do programming for large and small groups? The first thing we're always going to do is ask our clients, what do you want? Well, often what the client wants is not necessarily what they need. So we also need to consider what do they need? You know, what are they looking for? Is it cardio, strength, sports, performance, flexibility, recovery, quality of life? because often those wants and needs conflict. So we have to package whatever we're delivering to them in a way that they get what they want by you delivering what they need. So they might be coming in and saying, hey, um, I have a wedding this summer and I wanna get fit and I wanna be you know, X size, X weight, X body fat percentage by that date when really you know they have some underlying health conditions, maybe it be heart disease, um, diabetes, et cetera, and you're thinking what you really need is this, this, and this. So how can you wrap that in a package that's going to give them what they want, but deliver what they need? So that's always the first thing to consider as you're programming for a group. Um, then you need to start considering, when we talk about groups, whether they're small or large, we have now stepped away from the idea of one-on-one -on -one training where you can literally customize it to the client. So we have to start considering, are we gonna create themes? Are we gonna create formats, genres, whatever it is you wanna call them, but it's baselines, targets, timelines, phases, and goals that lead into, this is a 12-week cardio program for um, fat loss and weight loss. This is a 12-week strength program. This is, you know, however you're gonna break it down, but you've got to start thinking about what are those different types of formats, needs, modalities that you see so that you're not creating, you know, 105, but more like three to five different sets of programming that you can then lead clients into. Then how does that structure look? Well, at PowerPlate, ours is always prepare, perform, recover within every single workout. Warm up, workout, cool down. So in our warm-up, we have a number of things that no matter what type of programming it is, meaning is it strength, is it cardio, is it uh, recovery, that we do in the warm-up. We do functional flexibility, mobility, stability, and sometimes movement prep, uh, depending on the format. Then within that workout section, the perform section, is going to dive into the type of format. So maybe it's cardio work, maybe it's strength work, maybe it's power, speed, agility, et cetera, that all shows up through a set of exercises. We're gonna do core integration, and then we're going to do basic power and strength through push, pull, bend, squat, lunge, rotate movements. Then lastly, that recover, that cool down portion. Again, for power plate, we're talking about massage, soft tissue, uh, rehydration, and then functional flexibility again. So regardless of the different format, you're always going to see those three big chunks in every single workout that we do. As we then start to put this together, when you're starting to program overall, you've got to be mindful of how you're loading the body and what stressors you're putting on the body. Is it total body? Is it upper, lower? Do you have a split? Um, are you doing pushes and pulls? Are you working both anterior and posterior? Same side lateral, opposite side, lat opposite side lateral, 
um, same side rotational, opposite side rotational, and then lastly, making sure that you're moving through all three planes of movement, sagittal, frontal, and transverse planes. Woo, so when you start to think, have I done all that? Have I created a program that addresses every single one of those things that I can then feed my clients into? You know what? It's a lot of work. And I hate to say it, but, but the more and more, the longer I've been in this industry and the more that I travel, it is really hard for coaches and trainers around the world to have the kind of time to sit down and put together really great results-driven programming. Absolutely, there are coaches and trainers out there putting together great workouts, but it's one workout and then it's another workout and they're not necessarily connected. So what I love about having programming written is that that's my job is to sit, to think about all these things, to piece and put together to ensure that it's going to address every single one of those things. And then we can deliver that to your trainers, clients, sessions, members, et cetera so that they can then take the knowledge, their personality, their own um, twist and their own uh, adherence into that and deliver it to your members, knowing that it's been programmed in a way that's gonna really deliver those results because everybody wants that experience, that group experience, that positive experience that allows humans to connect. And more importantly, the joy of working on the power play is everyone wants an upgrade right? We all want an upgrade. We want to feel better, or we want to look better, or we want to be stronger, or we want to be able to do our weekend warrior stuff, um, or we want to just be healthier. Whatever it is, we're all looking for an upgrade. And the power plate can deliver that to everyone from the beginning exerciser, the deconditioned, to the elite athlete. Because the programming and the plate itself is such that it allows us to address any of those populations or every of those populations, I should say. So all of our programming sits within this idea that it's going to trigger our proprioceptors. And we know that that movement, that vibration turns on those proprioceptors and the proprioceptors then turn on the muscles. And because everything is connected to everything, you're really getting whole body vibration and the programming, whether um, it's a recovery or it's all the way up to strength, conditioning, cardio, has three-dimensional programming within it. And life and sport is that way. So we're all going to get that upgrade by working on top of the plate, ensuring that we're following those progressors of prepare, perform, recover, that we're incorporating both upper and lower body, dynamic and controlled movements, um, modifications, regression, so that it's absolutely achievable for any fitness level when they're working through it, and it's all 12-week periodized programming that's been written and tested. Utilizing those training components that I just talked about within prepare, perform, and recover, addressing each of those body parts or each of those movements that we just discussed. Now, if you're wondering what type of programming we offer, well, within small group, we actually offer five different 12-week periodized programs that um, uh, as of right now, we have over six series of 12-week programs that you can cycle through, you can repeat, you can use them however you want to. But we have X, which is a sports performance program, Strong, which is full body strength and conditioning, shape, tone, Burn, which is more of a cardio, uh, fat burning, weight loss program, Zen, combination of yoga, Pilates, and barb movements, so it's our recovery programming, and Thrive, which is our program designed um, along with the FI, FAI institution for our active aging, deconditioned, and new to exercise um, populations. So making sure that within each of these, you can then address those wants of the client, the needs of the client, what they're looking for, cardio, strength, recovery, flexibility, and take the programming that already exists, assess your client, and then put them in to a small group where you already know you're going to see success and adherence because hopefully you're going to be tapping into those reward centers and that deep need for humans to connect. It also comes with marketing, uh, kind of a business in a box. We've got loads of marketing, the programming, and then obviously the product, the power plate uh, that you can tap into. We have live trainings that we come out to your facility and do. If so, if you buy the plates 
the training is free. Their programming is free. So that's one of the things we like to include. We also uh, provide an implementation guide or kind of a, a, a workbook, if you will, to help you really put your systems into place. And this is just one example of, of something that's in the workbook that talks to um, the manager, facilitator, uh, or the trainer themselves, you know, who is the client that you're looking to put into this? Who is the coach you're looking to put into this particular format? Gives them an overview of the program and some marketing materials that you can then put into your own space that's uh, writable. But it's all about helping you to really be successful putting small or large group into your facility. So to give you an example of what that might look like, here you can see a couple of different pictures of plates um, that are lined up in a row. You can also put them in more of a circular pattern. Again, it's this idea that not only are we giving them a good workout, but more importantly, we're going back to that psychology of how we're wired, developing community. So you can see here that it's that idea of maybe in a circle, they're facing one another, they can see one another, there's a bit of interaction um, as they would move through the workout. We also have programming for large group. We have strength, cardio, and recovery. And the way our large group programming works is that it's actually built into puzzle pieces, meaning you can use, there are a couple of full-blown 30-minute workouts, or you can use those puzzle pieces. Maybe you take um, a warm-up, a strength segment, another strength segment, and then you have some other modality like a bike or something else that you've got them working on. So you've got them on the plate for part of it and then something else, you know, whether it be in your facility or in a kind of a group fitness room, the large group training programming is meant to be puzzle pieced in your own way. It also allows those trainers who perhaps really like to have a little bit more um, of their own personality injected into the workout and designing the workout themselves. You know, those ones who really like to design programming might like this a bit better because they can puzzle piece different parts of the workout together and kind of create their own stuff. So there's an infinite number of, of workouts you can put together through the different puzzle pieces that exist within large group training as well. What I love about the power plate, and I say this in all honesty, because I literally work on work out on a power plate every single day myself, <laughs> are the benefits. Because it does a number of really um, amazing things some of them obvious like you see here these are, are probably ones we think oh yeah exercise does that and then some of them a little less obvious uh, the idea of improved circulation lymphatic drainage um, uh, the health benefits of of added endorphins in our body and our pain receptors being dampened we don't always realize that that's happening and and happening as a result directly of whole body vibration and working on the power plate which are great byproducts of working on that plate. So um, good, good stuff. Then if you're looking for science, we have lots of white papers actually tied to our Power Plate webpage. So you can go to www.powerplate.com and find white papers on all of these points here, balance and flexibility, mood changes, weight management, circulation, muscle tone and strength. Um, it's, it's, all taken from science and research that has been done out in the field medically. So the benefits of, of whether you're working out, warming up, cooling down, it's all there and it's, it's just immense in what we can do. So fingers crossed, we will soon, we will soon come out of this period and hopefully be working not just on getting fitter ourselves, but, but the key is gonna be getting a fitter business. So now more than ever, this idea of power play and working in um, small groups might be really beneficial to your business, not only through a new market or a new revenue stream, but in power play small group training uh, and in the move training, people don't actually move from plate to plate. It is one person on a plate. Now, if we get to the point someday and you guys want to move people around on plates, you can, but the way the programming is designed is it's one person per plate. So it allows for social distancing. Uh, it might be a great way rather than having people that are coming in and touching everything in your gym. If you can have them come in and start doing power plate small group training to be able to get back in business and safely have people um, at your gym 
working out back in those community settings, connecting with one another in an appropriate distance from one another so that they're safe, they feel safe, um, and we can get back to doing what we do best, and that's connecting human beings. So if you want to look a little bit more, uh, both on some of the workouts and seeing what we're doing out there, you can download our app, the PowerPlay app. It's actually just been re-released on iOS. So if you have an iPhone and you haven't updated your app within the last two weeks, delete the old one, download the new one. It's all new. Um, we did, went through a lot of testing to make it easier to use. The Android version will be out later this summer. Uh, as we work through getting that all up to date as well and, and just a little bit easier to use. So there's a couple of things you could have, you yourself could do, or you could have your trainers do. One of them is the Discover Education Online. So that would be supplemental to this webinar today. It talks uh, about the basics and dives a little bit deeper into the actual science portions of how power plate works on the body, the neuromuscular adaptation. So when you look in the web or in the PowerPlay app and you go to, uh, I'm a coach or a trainer, you'll see there the Discover Education and you can watch it. It's less than an hour and it's great information. Even if you've already been through a live Discover workshop, it's a great way to kind of review, upskill, and maybe have your trainers um, and or managers, et cetera, coaches go through that as well as there's lots and lots of stuff on there. So please, please, please. Uh, follow us on Facebook and Instagram as well. Uh, there's always lots of other information, programming, et cetera. We are announcing when webinars are happening because um, we're gonna continue to do some of these live online uh, webinars and educational opportunities. So if you follow us there, you can always get the first opportunity to dive into these. And I just wanna open it up now for questions. So if you have questions, you can just, again, move your mouse and then go into that chat box and just type those in there and then I'm just going to take some time to be answering those as they pop in. Okay, um, here I have one that says, I've heard whole body vibration can boost uh, lymphatic drainage and help to prime the immune system faster than traditional exercise. Is this a way to market to our members Okay, when they get back to their clubs and sessions. Sorry, I'm reading as I go here. So yes, actually, um, it does boost the boost lymphatic drainage, and which then helps to boost our immune system. So we have a couple of white papers on that that you can read up onto. But especially as we're talking about this idea that we've we've got to have a strong immune system, we want to flush the toxins out. Power play is a great way to do that. So. Absolutely. If you want to use that in your key marketing, it's very simple. You can put even the links to those, those research papers in your emails. Um, we can help you with email templates, et cetera, through our marketing department to get that information out to your people, to encourage them to come back to work on PowerPlate because it can reach them that way. Um, let's see. I just had another one that asked, do we pay for programming? So as I mentioned in the webinar, um, whether it's the large group programming or the small group programming, no. It is free. We are not a licensed structure. If you have plates, if you buy the plates, we're going to come in, we're going to train your staff and, and teach them about the programming, how it's built, teach them about the science behind the power plate, uh, and then even how to coach it, making sure that they understand how the, the programming works, uh, and then deliver all of the programs themselves. So that's all included within the purchase of your power plate. Uh, really, we want to be an education partner. For you guys and, and continue that even after the purchase, the initial purchase of those plates, uh, bringing you more programming as, as we continue to see developments in the industry itself. So yes. Okay. Someone's typing. Let's see. Okay. I, I have seen more and more power plate studios and clubs popping up here in the U S okay. So not a question, just a statement. Great. Yes, that's absolutely true. Um, and it's true throughout Obviously, maybe not at this moment, but throughout the world, we are seeing more and more, not just power plate studios, but clubs within a club. Um, just to give a shout out uh, on this call, because I know Denise from Claremont Club is on this call, and they actually run a power plate studio within their larger health club. Um, so it's a great example of how you can take something that's very successful in a studio setting, bring it into a very large successful health club and spa and use it kind of as another revenue line within a larger health club. 
So again, a great way to develop community too, because you can make those people feel special. Uh, let's see. Sorry, I'm just reading again. It says, uh, met with Julie a month or so ago, set up to start a new 12 week program. I already teach multiple SGT classes on PowerPlay each week. How can I promote a 12 week program and justify charging more? So I'm gonna guess that right now you are not charging for those existing programs that is perhaps a part of maybe what's included. So in this case, you might want to look at what exactly are the offerings that you're, you're including in their membership? And then what new offering are you going to do? So are you offering PowerPlay small group training or is it um, your own programming that you're designing would be the first thing I would ask because perhaps then that becomes the differentiator. If you're offering PowerPlay, you could say it's 12 week, it's a boot camp that we're gonna start and finish. That would be one way you could perhaps dif differentiate it. Or if um, before you were just charging per session, per session, per session, and it was just included, and now you want to justify having this as an additional revenue source, bringing in a different format if you're not already teaching all five formats is an option, or perhaps creating and using the MOVE programming where you kind of puzzle piece things together so that you're offering something new. Um, it is hard if you've been doing it for free to move people over. And I would love to take this conversation offline and talk with you one-on-one -on -one and give you some ideas because obviously it's very specific to your location and we'd be happy to work with you on that. So I have your email. I'm going to hit you up later and give you some additional um, insides, uh, scoops on how maybe we can do that. Um, can I use the power plate and join small group if I have arthritis and have had knee or hip replacement? Absolutely. And what we're seeing is the medical community is actually using this to rehab their patients as soon as 72 hours after surgery, um, having them on a power plate just to enhance blood circulation because we know circulation and blood flow is crucial to recovery. So yes, you always want to make sure that you have your doctor's clearance, let them know exactly what you're doing, what the power plate is. But as long as they have clearance, they can, they, to be in the gym and to, to work out in that setting, absolutely. And in fact, it's really, really great for recovery. It's great for arthritis to relieve chronic uh, aches and pains in those joints. Um, oh, the last one I see here popping in. I've been using the plate uh, as my hot yoga since their hot yoga studio closed. They've been doing power plate yoga and said that the thermogenesis is feels wonderful. So that's awesome. And absolutely it does. What we'll find is because we have so many more muscle activations as a result of working on the plate, you're going to feel very warm very quickly. Uh, in fact, the Mayo Clinic gave us the neat designation that it's a non-exercise activity that causes thermogenesis. So stand on the plate, they said, for 10 minutes a day, and you're going to experience thermogenesis. So when you talk about the magic pill, that's about as close as we can get to offering a magic pill. So I don't see any new questions popping in. Anyone else out there that has a question? Awesome, well, I'm gonna take that as a no. If you think of something later, you have my email, please don't hesitate to ask. Thank you guys so much for joining me today. Um, hopefully we've learned a little bit about the psychology of how humans are wired kind of how we need to think about coaching and programming and then how we can implement that and maybe what you can use with PowerPlay. Please don't hesitate to uh, send me an email or any of the team, uh, even just info. I thank you guys for coming and stay safe and healthy.